forward. Okay. Now we're going to talk about adding devices to a developer account. So the first step of preparing your app for deployment. So what that means is we want you to have a device, whether it's an iPhone, an iPad, or whatever, right? And we want to be able to run apps on that device, right? So that you know you, they work, right? The apps work not just in the simulator, but on a phone. We're also going to use that phone. It's going to be a part of the deployment process, right? And, and let me tell you something. Many times you're going to have to deploy things to people's phones, right? Well, the first phone you're going to have to deploy it to are the ones attached to your machine, right? Part, part of testing as we go. Okay, so here we go. So, in general, before recently, you used to have needed UUID in order to add device to your Apple developer account, right? Now, you, you, I'm not UUID, UDID. This is a typo. I'm sorry. A UDID, not a UUID. <laughs> UDID stands for Unique Device Identifier. It's a 40 character string composed of various hardware identifiers that is unique to each iOS device. This string of characters used by iOS developers to identify individual devices when testing their apps. The UDID is used to register a device with the Apple's developer portal so that a developer can install, test an app on that device. The UDID has been used to track iOS users and their app usage habits. Due to privacy concerns, in 2013, Apple no longer is accepting submissions of apps that use the UDID. Developers should use alternative solution like identifier for vendor, IDFA, or, or advertising identifier, IDFA, whatever. Um, yeah, IDFV and IDFA, I'm sorry. Um, so now the UDID was used with the iTunes media player, right? The iTunes media player is gone, right? So iTunes was a media player with media library and mobile device management applications developed by Apple was released in 2001. And we used to play, download, and organize digital audio and video on personal computers running the Mac OS and maybe Windows operating systems. In 2019, Apple announced that it would be breaking up iTunes into separate apps for music, podcasts, and TV shows. The features of iTunes were integrated into the Mac OS, Catalina, and later versions. So now the standalone version of iTunes will not work on the latest version of Mac OS, and it's replaced by music, podcasts, and TV apps. That means if you have the newest Mac OS operating systems in your computer, which you should, you will not have iTunes. So how do you get the UDID, right? I'm Let's talk about that. Because you're going to need the UDID or an ID of some type to identify your device, right? So now, but let's talk about this, okay? Again, Apple discontinued the UDID for privacy reasons, right? The UDID is a unique identifier that is associated with a specific device. And it can store and track, um, store is used to track the profile of users, devices, and app usage habits. The use of the UDID by app developers and third-party advertisers raise concerns about the potential for privacy breaches and the unauthorized collection of personal information. In response to those concerns, Apple made changes to its developer guidelines in 2011, requiring developers to get user consent before collecting any information about the device, including the UDID. So in 2013, Apple announced it would no longer accept new apps that use the UDID. And you can read the rest, right? This move is to protect users' privacy, right? So 
How do I add a device without a UDID, right? You're going to use the IDFV, right? The IDFV, hold on, give me a second. Okay. The IDFV um, is basically, you can find it when you open up, you connect your computer, to you connect your device to your computer, then you're going to open up Xcode. You're going to go to the window, devices and simulators, and then you're going to find, you're going to plug your device in, make sure, you must make sure that your device is unlocked. If your device is locked, you will not see your device when you look in device and simulators, okay? You select the IDFB ID, copy it, okay? You're gonna copy it, and then you're gonna take that and you're go, going to go into your developer account. Now, if you want to continue and reference these instructions, these instructions are correct. But now I'm about to walk you through it. Okay. So let me go ahead and minimize this. Okay. All right. Now I minimize this and I am in my dependency injection for API. I've plugged my device into my computer. It's connected to my computer. Right. I go here, swipe up, unlock my device, okay? I go to window, devices and simulators, and this is the device. It's Dimitri's iPhone, right? I collect, I, I, I'm going to copy this. I select this and copy the whole thing, right? Copy, right? Then it's time for me to go into my developer account, right? So let me go here, click accounts. I seem to be logged in, right? Then I go to identifiers under certificates, identifiers and profiles. Go down here to identifiers, right? Go to devices, right? Then I'm gonna click the plus, right? Put in the device name. I should say Dimitri's iPhone. Dimitri's awesome phone. And then I'm going to, I spelled phone wrong, right? Um, I'm going to paste this UDID. Then I click, can click continue. And that's all you have to do. I'm not going to do that now because I've already added um I've already added his his phone as a device already. Um and let me make sure that there's isn't anything else. Continue to register. Yes. And that's all you have to do, right? Then you're registered. So, uh, I'm not going to go ahead and add that because I've already added it. iPhone 13 mini. And that's his unique identifier. Okay. So um, that's really what we have to do. I know you're going to go online and you see other tutorials that show you how to find a UDID iPhone or iPad without iTunes. Here's the problem with that. You're allowing other people or other third parties to get access to your computer and you sometimes you there's no way you can know exactly what's in their software you have to remember something gets onto your machine you have this little thing called keychain access right keychain access has a lot of things that you want to remain secure right passwords logins right? All a program has to do is get this information about, I don't know, some credit cards, login to personal accounts, bank accounts. It's all here 
in your, well, it's not here in this because I don't have anything on this, but this is my development. My development stuff does not have anything personal on here, but you know what I'm saying? Um, all it has to do, right click on this, get info. They're already in your machine. They can access your passwords. Now you're in trouble. They also have access to keys, certificates, secure notes. You, you don't want to give a third party access to all that. So I recommend you do not go and use other third parties like this. Um, what's that third party? UDID.tech. If I was you, I mean, personally, I haven't seen any bad ramifications. Matter of fact, I think I've done it before, but you need to do it this way. Okay. So um, that's how you add a device to your developer account onto the next.